would target Mark and they would take care of Mark themselves because they do know how to put someone on business and they also know how to destroy lives. Each culture has to have its heroes who obviously were willing to give their lives up for that movement. And dying might be inevitable. If I go to a U.S. prison for life, I'm certainly going to die in prison. In any case, I never worry about it. To be honest, I think there's a bit of fear in him that he doesn't let show. I think he wants to believe and prepare himself for the worst eventual outcome. Walking by, going, what are they doing? <laughs> They're the Lenati! <laughs> All things yeah. I see going through the park. <laughs> oh my goodness. It's cannabis and oil. Oh, I heard, I heard. One that. ounce of THC. And we're going to see if it can penetrate the skin and kill all the cancerous cells or any precancerous cells. Mark Emery is a Canadian, happily living in Vancouver. But the decision to investigate and charge him was made across the border. I was curious, why did Emery's marijuana seeds pose such a serious threat to America? So I headed to the Seattle office of the DEA and put the question to the man who headed the investigation. What we started seeing was these indoor grow operations that are popping up all over the United States, uh, traced right back to Mark Emery. Seeds may look to some as, oh, that's insignificant. But those seeds then go to an endo grow operation. And then we see uh, the negative consequences of people using that marijuana. Marijuana is a significant problem here in the United States. He did not care that his marijuana seeds resulted in the production of marijuana that wound up that would devastate families and communities in the United States. That people are still sitting in prison for 20 years over marijuana seeds or something makes me want to freak out. Doug Hyatt, an attorney based in Seattle, has defended hundreds of medical marijuana patients busted under U.S. laws and knows firsthand the DEA's hardline approach. If Mr. Benson wants to talk about destroying families, then talk to me about my clients whose lives are destroyed because they're trying to use marijuana as medicine and the government comes in and takes all of their belongings, takes their car, tries to forfeit it all, tries to prove them drug traffickers when they've got a doctor's recommendation and 10 plants. And I'm trying to fight them out of state court situations. The only thing I see ruining people's lives is the government's policies. I personally am persuaded that marijuana is a health concern, that marijuana should be illegal, and the current approach is to criminalize that behavior. According to the U.S. government, marijuana is everything from a common health risk to a gateway to drug addiction, impaired driving, irresponsible sex, and crime. These are claims that David Malmo Levine has heard before. There are no marijuana drug tanks. There are no marijuana cancer wards. No real evidence of marijuana casualties and marijuana victims. A veteran activist, he argued for legalization before the Supreme Court of Canada, insisting that cigarettes and alcohol do much more harm to society than marijuana. Where are all Mark Emery's victims? Where are the bodies? Show me the bodies. I haven't seen any bodies. Really, if they're putting that guy away for life, you should be able to at least point to one guy with something worse than bronchitis. You can't. There are no marijuana victims. It's all a myth. People are unjustly being put in prison and having their lives destroyed for choosing a substance that's, you know, somewhere between coffee and beer. As far as I'm concerned, this is not that strong of a substance. I've smoked five joints since you and I have been sitting here together. Of the strongest pot in the world. I could keep going for hours. But I could not do that if I drank whiskey or beer or wine. Greg smokes a lot more pot than the average person, but he does have a point. 
Government inquiries around the world have spent years of study and millions of dollars and have consistently come to similar conclusions. That the responsible use of marijuana does not pose a significant health risk. That alcohol and cigarettes are far more harmful overall. That criminalizing pot causes more harm than the drug itself. And that decriminalization is recommended. These reports, and there have been over 20, include analysis of medical studies which caution that anything you smoke can harm your lungs. But rather than cancer, bronchitis seems to be the most common risk. And recent studies have found that pot can make types of psychosis, like schizophrenia, worse for some people, but paradoxically can be used to treat others. For some, the medical benefits far outweigh the risks. Hey, all you POT TV fans, how about all our extradition fans? I'm Michelle Rainey, and welcome to Michelle's Rant. I fought for 10 years to be legally allowed to possess and grow marijuana. And finally, I uh, was able to acquire my medical marijuana exemption in Canada a year ago. Michelle Rainey is one of 1,500 Canadians currently licensed to legally smoke cannabis and grow up to 50 plants for personal medical use under the Canadian government's Compassionate Access Program. I have Crohn's disease, and I was diagnosed with Crohn's disease when I was 17 years old. The explanation of Crohn's is eat some glass and then try and go to the bathroom. The pain is excruciating. Cannabis calms my intestinal tract, so the pain of my diarrhea and my nausea is not as severe as it would normally be. She's been indicted for assisting Mark Emery in pushing these marijuana seeds to indoor grow operations in the United States. I am pretty confident that she would not be smoking marijuana in a federal prison in the United States should that happen. If I go to prison in the US, I will die. There's no ands, if, buts, or maybes. I will die. Sticking to their mantra that pot causes drug addiction and has no medical use, the U.S. government continues to enforce some of the harshest drug laws in the world. But still, how can any person face life for selling marijuana seeds? Well, in the United States, federal sentences for pot are based on the amounts involved. One marijuana seed is considered equal to one plant. 100 plants equals a prison sentence of 5 to 40 years. 1,000 plants, 10 years to life, all without parole. By that logic, Mark Emery, who is accused by the DEA of sending over 2 million seeds to the U.S., qualifies for a life sentence 2,000 times over. He kept challenging DEA, challenging... U.S. Department of Justice challenging everything going on there. When you do that, it's inevitable that they're going to come after you. You don't put a stick in Superman's eye. On the day Emery was arrested, a DEA press release declared that Emery was, in the U.S. government's opinion, one of the top 46 drug traffickers in the entire world, and the only one in Canada. That is so ridiculous. I mean, is uh, imagine within, <laughs> within the world, people are trading in tons of cocaine and heroin. And what's he doing? He's, he's selling seeds. They said Emery is the biggest organized crime figure in all of Canada, and that I'm bigger than any other gang, including Hell's Angels and Triads. And of course, it's not even an organization. There's nobody but me. I had to wonder. What really makes Mark Emery such a high priority for the U.S. government? A clue can be found in that press release. DEA head Karen Tandy stated that Emery's arrest is a blow to the marijuana legalization movement and legalization groups active in the United States. In fact, the statement does not discuss Emery's crime, but the nature of Emery's political activities. I am the decision maker on his arrest, and I can assure you that there was absolutely no political motivation in that. But if there was proof of political motivation, it would mean Emery's salvation. Under Canada's extradition treaty with the United States, it is illegal to extradite a person in order to punish them for political activities. They seem frightened to me when I... They don't seem frightened to me. 
question is, will there be sufficient evidence to convince a court of law that this is a politically inspired extradition request? Hundreds of thousands of dollars of Emory's illicit profits are known to have been channeled to marijuana legalization groups active in the United States and Canada. Drug legalization lobbyists now have one less pot of money to rely on. This entire statement is a political manifesto. It's an admission that they're after the guy for his political activities and not for his seed selling. That is clearly a good piece of cogent evidence, but just a piece. Let me be perfectly clear on why Mark Emery was charged. Violating U.S. laws, targeted because he's a drug trafficker. You know, did he fund the legalization movement? There is evidence to show that, but that's not why he was targeted. In every war, there has to be a price to pay for our enemy's malfeasance, and that means we have to make them pay. It's all ideology. It's just the United States can't stand the movement that I front, and they're trying to do everything they can to take that one person down. We. <laughs> the one thing that I am certain about, beyond a shred of a doubt, that Mark was targeted because he's a political activist. On the political side, Canada and the United States are like best friends forever. So if we changed our law, it'd be very hard for them to support their laws. And they have to send a chill. Marijuana does not impair... So they have to step in and basically silence the most vocal activist in Canada. And the only activist, this is what's important, the only activist who was an entrepreneur who could make money. There's no benefactors in Canada other than Mark. People relied upon Mark. We must wage what I have called total war against public enemy number one in the United States, the problem of dangerous drugs. In the pot-fueled hippie and anti-Vietnam War era of the 70s, Nixon declared war on drugs and set up the Drug Enforcement Administration. In an attempt to cut off the supply of drugs coming into America, the DEA went after producers around the world extraditing those arrested to the United States to be tried and punished under American law. But by any measure, the strategy has not been successful. Marijuana is freely available in the U.S., and the rate of marijuana use among Americans is now roughly double what it is in Holland, where pot is decriminalized. The United States has spent, some say, perhaps as much as a trillion dollars U.S., trillion U.S. dollars fighting against war on drugs. In Ottawa, Eugene Oscapella, a lawyer and criminology professor, runs a small, independently funded drug policy watchdog group. The United States now incarcerates one quarter of all the human beings imprisoned on Earth. Punishment doesn't work. Just look south of the border. All you gotta do is look south, and you're gonna see a colossal failure of the prohibitionist model. While the U.S. government continues to play hardball, and Emory's case is a clear example of that, many other countries are backing off, especially where pot is concerned. Here in Canada, public support for the decriminalization of marijuana has been polled as high as 69%. This is the largest global marijuana march in the world today with 250 cities. We've got possibly 20,000 people here today. To some extent, this trend has been stoked by Emery's relentless campaigns. I think they targeted Mark because Mark was uh, putting his money into changing the laws. Now, in Great Britain, it's not illegal to sell marijuana seeds, right? So you can't be extradited from the United Kingdom for selling marijuana seeds. They're safe. There's been seed sales out of the Netherlands for decades. There's uh, continuing seed sales out of Canada. And there's seed sellers in the United States. Um, they're just not engaged in political reform and therefore not putting bullseyes on their back, as Mark did. And I am never going to retreat. I want to overthrow the governments of the United States. I want to overthrow the government of Canada. There should be cannons everywhere. Anyway, I'm from Ontario. In part spooked by attitudes on this side of the border, the U.S. government continues to step up enforcement. 
and I was surprised to discover that